Which do I think are better? Electronic books or molecular books? Well, I think the answer is obvious. Don't you? The answer is clearly ebooks, electronic books. Consider, if you will, the weight of the evidence. This, this, uh, this svelte little device weighs, I don't know, eight ounces, seven and a half ounces. This hefty tome, one of my favorite hefty tomes, weighs, oh, probably two kilos or close to it. Maybe two and a half. I haven't bothered to weigh it. It contains uh, one book, if you're one of those sort of folks, or 73 books, if you look at it as a, a collection of books. And it has notes and all that as well. And I like this book a lot. It is one of my sort of go-to uh, paper books. I like I like the way it feels. I like that it's a hefty tome. I like that it has not just the books, but notes and references and all kinds of of cool other bits and pieces beside just the text. But wait, I have in my Kindle library two different editions of the Jerusalem Bible. One, just the reader's edition with uh, only the text in one edition with all the notes. And I can stick this little guy in my back pocket. And the uh, the Jerusalem Bible becomes one of, of dozens and dozens of books that I have downloaded to this device. And I have in my cloud Kindle library oh, nearly 900 books. I have had more once upon a time, but I actually went through and and permanently deleted some stuff just because I didn't want it cluttering up the list. And about uh, 30 different magazine subscriptions and a few, no, 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 pardon me, 13 different magazine subscriptions, a few single issues of magazines, about 40 PDFs, and instant access to, um, to dictionaries in just about any language that I I could desire. Now, I learned to read when I was three, and uh, my mother taught me to read, and she was a great believer in little golden books. I think I, well, I don't think I have any downloaded on this device, but I, I have some little golden books in my Kindle library now. Imagine if when I was three, there had been Kindles available at the Woolworths. Remember Woolworths? My mother bought my little golden books at the Woolworths. Imagine if she had bought a Kindle. Now, adjusted for inflation, she could have bought me a Kindle for, oh, five or six dollars, four ninety-five or whatever. And the little golden books would probably have cost, oh, I don't know, I think they cost 25 cents then, and so they might have been a dime as a Kindle edition. And I would have all those books. I would have all the Tom Swifts that I had read in The Kid and Bomba the Jungle Boy and Robinson Crusoe. And when I got a little bit older and uh, I remember the first adult, one of the first adult books I read, um, James A. Mitchell's The Fires of Spring. Um, I would have the poetry of Yeats that I read when I was a senior in high school. I don't have Carl Sandburg in here. I read when I was a ninth grader. Uh, now, you know, some of those Kindles might have worn out, but it would have been cheaper to have bought a new Kindle than to buy a new uh, 
bookcase, but instead I didn't have a Kindle until about, and I use Kindle as a generic e-reader term, like you might say Kleenex. I'll put a link in the description below to to my favorite uh, e-ink uh, review channel, I guess, on YouTube, a good e-reader, because there are Kobos and, and Nooks and all others, but I would think that Amazon has the wise selection of books. Anyway, if I, uh, for oh, most of my life, until actually I believe it was 2000, <sighs> life is so long and time is so short, I don't know, uh, 15 years ago maybe, let's say 15 years ago, uh, although I think that's wrong. Um, uh, all I have is physical books. And there have been time and time again when I have had all of my walls covered with bookcases. Just full of wonderful, wonderful books. Uh, there are so many delightful books out there. And, and uh, I have read a lot of them and I, I want to... Uh, look back on them sometimes, so I would line my walls with the things. But then sometimes I would move, or sometimes I would need money, or sometimes I would run out of room. And for one reason or another, I would get rid of those books and I'd have to start again. When I finally realized the wonders of e-books, I had one few times I actually counted them, 3,500 books. And let me tell you, boys and girls, just getting rid of 3,500 books wasn't easy. I began giving them to the local library, and at first they were thrilled, and then they said, maybe you should hold off. At that time, I lived in a, a town that had a magnificent thing called Hill Speak, this pass-along program, which has since died, uh, because no one wants physical books anymore, I guess, where you could take books or or take books to or take books from free uh, and I got an awful lot of my 3,500 books there but I bought some just about every every month uh, what are most like hmm. anyway uh, and I started using Kindle books started using e-books and, you know, it looks like I've bought a lot of books, but there are just an awful lot of books that are absolutely free as e-books. One of the things that I began to collect when I was in high school was Max Mueller's series of Sacred Books of the East, a wonderful series of books that introduced me to, to uh, the religions of people beyond but nowhere. And then they came as Dover editions. I, it was how I could afford them. I think they were like from two to four dollars a volume, and I started collecting them. They're all available free as ebooks. I had uh, erudite and sophisticated friends who would have the Harvard Classics or the University of Chicago's great books lining their shelves. And uh, all of those editions, those same editions, because those are editions that are in public domain, are available as free ebooks. And but wait, there's more. Had there been something like the Kindle Scribe available when my mother was teaching me to read, she actually didn't teach me to write. I think that's kind of interesting. Um, she just taught me to read. I didn't learn to write much until I was in the first grade. I could have not only all the books that I've ever owned available at any given time, but I would still have access to that paper I wrote on uh, Carl Sandburg in the ninth grade. Uh, that paper I wrote on William Butler Yeats when I was a senior, or the paper I wrote on Ernst Cassier when I was a junior in college. And 
none of those things would take up all the walls of, uh, of any of the places that I've lived. Now, of course, there is one downside to ebooks. People often, often like to have themselves photographed or they make their, their videos with uh, great rows of books behind them. I've done some sometimes myself because, well, that's what we do to try to impress one another. And I, I think, you know, if you go into someone's house or someone came into my house when I had all those books, they think, oh boy, a smart dude lives here. If you came into my house and there was just a little thing like this uh, lying around, it wouldn't give you a clue at all to how erudite and sophisticated I think I am. But still, all in all, I think ebooks have a great advantage over other books, and I wish that all books came as ebooks. Unfortunately, they do not. I have taken photographs of most of the books that I have read over the last, I don't know, 25 years because I have trouble remembering the names of things. It is a real, a real thing. It's, <laughs> there's a, a diagnosis and all that sort of thing. But I can't remember what the name of it is because it's a name. And a lot of them are books that I checked out of the library. And what I have found more and more now is I go to the library and I look at the book and I think, oh, that looks like something I'd like to read. I will just buy the ebook because I didn't mention that one of the things I have never been able to bring myself to do is to mark up a physical book. It seems like it's a work of art and that it's somehow a sacrilege to, to write. I put bookmarks in places, but that's as far as I go. Whereas, of course, with an e-book, well, I can write all over the thing and have all kinds of notes. And the notes are indexed. Did I mention that? Didn't mention that, did I? I used to have a file cards of <laughs> my notes about books and a hurricane came along and erased all of those. But I can do that sort of thing with my e-book. So although other people might not think I'm as erudite and sophisticated as a, a book collector, well, I find that e-books work better for my feeble mind. But as is so often the, the case, I, I think there is another side of the story that's worth considering. So I'll make a, another video soon about why I think paper books, molecular books, are better than e-books. Because, well, I, uh, I'm polyamorous when it comes to books. I'll read anything, even the bags of cereal boxes. Thanks for watching.